What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you guys are having a great one. Before we get into the video, be sure to check out the new gaming store, acrylics.com, right there on the screen for all the merchandise to support the channel. And don't forget, guys, subscribe, tap the bell, give this video a like, comment below, and let me know what you guys think of this build. Pretty much identical to the build behind me, except we're going to be running an Intel 13900KS with 32 gigs of DDR5, and this is going to be a sweet machine. Let's get right into the build, guys. We're going to have a good time with this one. Let's go. Now, I don't know if this is true, but what I read is that if you run the RLG Hyper M.2 card, which is PCI Express 5.0 ready for your SSDs, it takes away the speed from the graphics card. If you run it in either slot, it's going to make the other PCI Express slot run at times eight instead of times 16. I don't know if I want to slow my graphics card down. I got to look more into that before I put my M.2 drive in here. And I've got plenty of time because the current Samsung Evo 980 Pro that I have only does about eight gigabits a second, which your standard M.2 dot two slot will do or even more so i don't need it just yet this is a very heavy motherboard very well built the quality with asus is always top notch go ahead and get the m.2 hard drive put in here heat sink is on the other side and don't forget if you're doing this install yourself you're going to remove this cover right here this is where the thermal pad is to keep your m.2 drive cool as well as another thermal pad right here so we're going to remove that so you can see here, there's a quick release feature, a quick locking feature. You just turn sideways like this, and it'll release the M.2 just like that. Push down onto the thermal pad and then lock it in place. You gotta make sure you push it all the way down. That is a quick lock and release feature on this board. So the ROG Maximus Hero Z790 is probably the best board I have ever dealt with. It's insane, like it really is. It's got the thermal pad on the bottom and on the top. It's gonna keep it really cool. This board is really meant to push the boundaries. I can just tell by how this board is built that it's going to put out a lot of power, a lot of overclocking potential. Um, you can also tell with all the heat sinks. And all right, we're gonna remove the cover from the thermal pad. We're going to go ahead and get this installed now. Line up the holes. There we go. That's installed. Next is the CPU. What we're going to do is we're going to put this board down so the back plate can't fall off and we can screw the new plate into it. So what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and remove this back plate. But before we do that, we're going to get the CPU in here. And the reason we're doing this plate is because there is an issue where coolers are not quite doing their job. What I mean by that is they're not able to contact the CPU properly due to the buckling of this design. So what we're going to do is we're going to get the CPU CPU in here and once the CPU is in we're going to open this up put the CPU in and we're going to remove the screws this way the pins aren't exposed you don't ever want the pins to be exposed it's not the same as an AM4 and AM5 socket uh, by AMD where the pins are actually on the CPU and uh, these pins are significantly more fragile than the ones that are on an AMD CPU so it's just different than doing an AM4 and AM5 anything with AMD is, is less risk because these pins the Intel pins are so weak and, and trying to bend them straight back is really hard to do I added Intel Pentium 4 that I really had to mess with to get a pin straight. That really sucked. All right, guys, you see everything's installed. I had to test fit the cooler, which is why there's still a little bit of thermal compound in between the cracks. I don't want to remove it to clean it. It's not going to hurt anything, but it's definitely not 100% clean. The problem is I don't want to take this bracket off and then run into a situation where the bracket's too tight or too loose. I got it just right on the first try and I just want to leave it just like that. And the reason is because when you put these screws in, you want to gently start threading them and do about a half a turn each till they're all finger tight. Once they're finger tight, you do about 90 degrees on each screw and then you go back through and do it again one more 90 degree just so that you're using your fingers on the Allen wrench but not turning too tightly. The rule of thumb is once you put the Allen key and you start to turn and you start to feel resistance on all four screws, you turn in a 90 degrees. I did mine a little bit more than 90. I did like 90 and then maybe like another 45 and mine's perfect. So that's what I recommend. Take your time with it. Do not rush it and everything will be good to go.
Well, guys, the build went according to plan, and I could not have been any happier than I am right now. It really turned out splendid. And I'm quite happy because I was able to jump up my frames per second significantly from the 5950X Ryzen AM4 processor, which is a really good CPU. However, the RTX 4090 really commands a lot of power out of the CPU. And if you're chasing frames in 1080p, you're not really gonna get that with the 4090 and a 5950X. In fact, if you're like me and you're chasing nothing but 1080p and you truly want your 360 frames per second well you're gonna have to look elsewhere because that's not gonna happen just yet but theoretically you're looking for the highest frames per second you possibly can achieve in 1080p you really only have two choices 13900k and 7950x however these two processors still bottleneck quite a bit most of the bottlenecking on those two processors is going to come in the form of amd 7950x the 13900k is still pretty good however i highly recommend the 7950x3 3D or the 13900KS and again even though the 3D processor is a big step up from the non 3D processor you still are going to see significant gains in most games on the 13900KS so to keep all this rambling to a minimum as you can see on the screen if you really want the most performance and bang for buck and just want pure all out performance in 1080p with your RTX 4090 the only true way to go is the 13900KS as it's the best silicon that's been hand -slapped selected by Intel and gives you six gigahertz, which is crazy boost turbo frequency, which is really gonna help out in games. As you can see here, CPU time is three milliseconds down to two milliseconds, which with the 5950X was an astonishing seven milliseconds. And you're seeing here, this computer is just astronomically fast. We're getting 308 frames per second with the DLSS on quality. And you can see that with the 4090 and the 13900KS, we are getting very close to 360 frames per second, but we're not quite there yet. It's going to be the next generation 14900KS, which is probably going to be around 330 to 350. And because of that, we're most likely going to be running an RTX 5090, and that's about two years away. So we're a year or two away from being able to truly achieve 360 frames per second in 1080p. And we're most likely, because of that fact, having a new video card, going to be able to achieve it without having to run DLSS. With the next generation of video card and CPU in about two years' time, I would expect to see about 360 frames per second full 1080 and about 240 frames per second in quad hd and probably near 240 in 4k because this generation we're getting close to 160 frames per second in 4k so next generation cpu gpu combo we're going to be very close to 200 220 in 4k and everything else is going to be over 240 or close to 360 appreciate you guys being here for another video if you guys have a blessed one be sure to check out the store acrylics.com with a one acrylics one and only right there on the screen for all your gaming merchandise and to support the channel and be sure to check out my other channel driveway demons and you can get me on all socials twitch youtube facebook for the live streams tiktok instagram twitter all acrylics with the one right there on the screen catch you guys on the flip side peace and love for you i'm out of here deuces you guys are still here i got nothing for you this video is done it's over man go home what are you doing this video is over there's nothing left to see here this video is done you don't want to go home? You want to go to bed? Do whatever you're about to do? Just, you're still here? Well, you might as well click that video then. Check that one out right there. Matt, you might as well, you know?